Welcome back to Elevated Inspiration for Sunday School. Let me just take a few minutes here and encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you like what you're hearing and then you'll know each week when I upload another one. Alright, so we are in the same thing which is Jesus and the Divinic Covenant. This is in the April the theme that the Cogent Legacy Version is using. Last week we looked at from suffering to glory where Jesus actually had to tell his disciples and reveal to them the scripture. We focus on the word and understanding of the scriptures. Now this week we're looking at an eternal kingdom. We're in the Old Testament again, 2 Samuel the 7th chapter, verses 4 through 16. Now the question I want you to think about is this question here. How can we repay God for what he has bestowed upon us? And, and think about the blessings. You know, all the blessings that God has given you, how can you repay him? Now, I asked that question for a reason. We're going to be looking at four different outlines. Um, and the first outline is a house reflecting his glory. I like that. A house reflecting his glory. Now, again... God responds to David's desire. And we'll jump all the way to the fourth verse, but quickly, verses one through three, it actually explains how David desired to build a house for God because he's living in a mansion. He looks out and he see a tent, which is the same tent that was God gave Moses the vision to build. It's the tabernacle that is being carried from place to place. And he sees the Ark of the Covenant and he sees that it is dwelling inside a portable tent. He tells Nathan, I want to build God a temple, a house. Nathan said, Nathan said, go for it. And that's where we are here in the fourth verse. It says, and it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan, now not to David. Go and tell my servant, David, thus says the Lord, I like this. Thou shalt build a house for me to dwell in? It's sort of like a question. You know, I read that several times. God is saying, wait a minute, hold up. You want to build me a house? Now think about that for a minute. You want to build me a house? A place on earth that I can dwell? How big and magnificent I am? Or, wow. You want to be a mere house? You know, I play with that verse so often, and I, I think it's unique. Because he goes and says, Whereas I have not dwelt in a house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even this day, but have walked in tents and tabernacles. Hmm, interesting. In all the places wherein I have walked, and all the children of Israel spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people, saying, Why? Build ye not me a house of cedar, a permanent place. And God said, wait a minute now. I haven't asked anyone to do that for me. But you, David, want to build me a house? Hmm. I like that. So, think about this right here. I found this quote. It says, the more we do, the more we can do. It seemed like it was a surprise that God stated, you want to build me a house? Now, let's think about this. Most of us think of how little we can do and still please the Lord. Do we ever think about doing more than God requires? Why? Why is that? Okay, now let's move into the next outline. God protected David. Now, I like this outline because it shows God's role in David's present. And then he tells, again, now Nathan, now therefore go and say to David, I took thee as a sheep coat from the sheep to be ruler of my people Israel. I like that. I was with thee whithersoever thou winnest. I have cut off all thy enemies. I did this. Now notice he used the word I. God is using the word I. I took thee from being a shepherd and made you ruler over my people. Verse 10. And I will appoint a place. For my people Israel. Now this is a key verse here. Notice he's saying. I will appoint a place. For my people Israel. I will plant them. That they may dwell in a place of their own. And move no more. 
neither shall the children of wickedness affect them anymore as before time. This is what God is saying now. Not man is going to build a place. He's saying, I, I want to emphasize that. Not man, but I will put them in a permanent location. So my question, have you ever wondered what we can learn from David, the great king, when he was not allowed to build a temple for God? Now, even though he wanted to build a temple for God, but he was not allowed. Now, how do I know that? Okay. And, and it's amazing that you say that because I want to jump now from not in our lesson. I want to jump to first Chronicles, the 22nd chapter and the eighth verse. Now I want you to look at this. It says, but the word of the Lord came to me saying, thou hast shed blood abundantly and has made a great wars, great wars, not a, has made great wars, and thou shalt not build a house unto my name, because thou has shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. Now, it's amazing when you think about that, because God is not going to allow David to build his house, because he shed blood. Now, we don't know how long it took David to correction. How long did it take from what Nathan said? Because I don't think the answer why came right then. I think it was a little bit longer before we have that. So my takeaway, my takeaway is David correction, God honor David's intentions of building him a house, even though David could not build it. But the intention, the pure, that's, that's the thing I got out of this. It's the intentions. Sometimes we may wish to give something to God, but we are unable to do so. In such cases, God accepts our intentions as a gift. God honor David's intentions. Now, that's amazing when you think about it. The next outline is unique because of David's intentions. Look what God does. An eternal kingdom. In, 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 in the verses 11, 12, and 13, give us something uniquely. I highlighted some of these verses because I want you to see some of the phrases in these verses. And since the time I command the judges to be over my people Israel. So God go all the way back. To the judges, you remember them? Gideon, Sam, uh, uh, not Samuel, Samson, um, Deborah, the judges. I have caused thee to rest from all thy enemies. And then look at this. Also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee an house. He. Now, I know Solomon built the temple. I know that. Okay, because it says right back in Second Chronicles, what we was looking at that Solomon built. But notice what he's saying. Here, he's saying, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee a house. Telling David now. Verse 12. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers after you die, notice, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels. I will establish his kingdom. There's that I again. I will establish his kingdom. God is going to do it. Not man. God is going to do it. And in verse 13, he shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. So I see three things here. It is evident that Solomon fulfills some of the promises, but the promise of eternal domain forever is repeated three times beyond Solomon range. Notice, God would establish a house. What Solomon built was destroyed by Babylon, the Babylonians. He's, God said, I will establish a house that's going to last forever. I will establish a kingdom forever and God will establish a throne to rule. God is going to do it, not man. Okay, I like that. 
God is going to do it and not man. So David's in Israel history is the next outline. And we end with this. This is a covenant. I will be his father and he shall be my son. Notice that. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. Wow. Who does that sound like? Just like the verse we had last week from Isaiah. The chastisement of his peace was upon him. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And then I highlighted verse 16. And thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. That's David's house. And Jesus was recognized during his ministry as being the son of David. Even the lineage have him linking back to David. And notice here, thy throne shall be established forever. Wow. Isn't that amazing when you think about it? My end of question is this. Because remember now, David's intention is what caught God's attention. So I ask this question. How satisfied are we with what God has given us? David truly was satisfied to the point that he wanted to build a house of cedar for his God. What about us? What have we done that we want to do something for God? Think about that. You know, I ask myself, what did I get out of this lesson? And the lesson learned that I got is this. When I look at the promise that God gave David, the divine promise, it would take more than a mere man to fulfill this promise. Therefore, we have a God man. That's Jesus Christ. A God man. He established the kingdom and the throne that lasts forever. See, Jesus fulfilled his covenant through his death, burial, and resurrection, becoming the risen king. He rules over the kingdom of God and sits on the throne, fulfilling the divine promise. In summary, Jesus Christ fulfilled this divine promise, confirming the promise of a king and a kingdom that lasts forever. It's hard for us who have a president that changes every four years or, you know, most if they win two terms is eight years. It's hard for us to realize because we're constantly looking at our rights. I don't want my rights violated. But when you serve a king, the most important thing is the king's rights, not our rights. And that's why I put here my thought to remember is if Jesus is king, then I must serve him. Think about that. If Jesus is king, I must serve him. You know, I have a verse to reflect on is, and thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee, and thy throne shall be established forever. We serve a king that has established a kingdom that will last in eternity. Are you willing to serve that king? Are we serving him? Are we serving self? Something to think about. You know, are we serving him? Are we serving self? Let us end in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to be good stewards over the things that you have blessed us with. And keep us ever mindful of the fact that you desire to dwell in and commune within us oh let us let us be that temple that I'll allow you to dwell in Jesus name we pray amen amen and amen hey I sure appreciate you all joining um, uh, me in this session today uh, we like I always said at the beginning if you like what you hear please hit that bell so you know when I put another one share this lesson with someone else and most of all, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to it. Next week, we're going to be looking at Son 
of David. And we're still in that Jesus and the divided covenant. And our Bible truth for next week is our decision of faith is his future of our, the future of our descendants. Thank you.